Hi guys, hope you all doing well and this will be the third video of the entire series that I will be creating for OAuth 2.0 protocol and in this particular video I'm going to talk about endpoints and authorization grant and for that let's consider a scenario wherein we have an application, we have resource owners, a group of users and since we are talking about OAuth so there will be an authorization server and a resource server and there must be some information that will be protected by a resource server that we will be calling as a resource the core information or the core raw data which my application is going to access now in order for my application to access contact information of a user there will be three endpoints that will be used now the two endpoints will be hosted by authorization server itself the very first one will be authorized and the next one will be token endpoint and there will be one more endpoint that will be used and that will be something that will belong to resource server because this particular endpoint might be able to give you that information that your application is looking for so in our case it will be contacts now the reason why I said generic flow of OAuth because you might end up working with service providers or vendors or any identity as a service vendor wherein these three endpoints might belong to the same entity that means the same server might have the availability of all these three endpoints but if we talk about the theoretical part if we talk about What's there conceptually there should be authorization server and there should be a resource server because these two servers have their own scope of hosting different endpoints now the very first thing that will happen is we will ask our users to go to the application link and the application link could be https application.com now once the user will try to navigate this particular link on the user agent of their machine the first redirection that your application has to do is to send or redirect the user to authorize endpoint now authorize endpoint will accept the credentials or will get the user credentials validated and will get the client ID of your application validated just to check whether the request that the authorization server has received is legitimate or not and after validating these details authorization server will send a response back to your application now this response is in most of the flows is called as code because when your application is redirecting the user to the authorized endpoint in the response type parameter you're actually mentioning code so this acknowledgement that is provided by authorization server to your application is called authorization code authorization code because the user has authorized your application now when I say user has authorized your application what do I mean by this that once the user will be redirected to the authorized endpoint the consent will be approved by the user this means what that there is a user who knows that this particular application is actually going to access their contact information the next step will be of this application using the same information and send a new request to token endpoint and after which authorization server will send a token back to your application now your application is going to use this token to access the protected resource now when we started this particular video i mentioned about authorization count the most important step and that is the step number three wherein you redirect the wherein the authorization server validates the credential presents a consent consent gets approved and our first acknowledgement is sent back to your application so this is the process which is actually known as authorization grant and depending upon the four flows that we are going to discuss for the valid applications i'm going to show you what values or how or what is the redirect information that has actually been sent from authorization server to your application now if we talk about the core endpoints 
there will be three endpoints. The very first one will be the authorized endpoint that will be hosted by authorization server and the authorization endpoint will be used by the client to obtain authorization from the resource owner via user agent redirection. So user will be using a browser to access your application. Your application has redirected the user to authorized endpoint. Authorized endpoint has validated the user credential, get, got the consent approved, validated your client ID and sent a response back. Now you will use this information to send a new request to token endpoint wherein the client is exchanging authorization grant. The same set of information is which is provided to your application to get an access token and this is something which happens typically with client authentication. Now when I say client authentication you might have to use client ID and client secret depending upon the flow that you are using. The last endpoint that will be in use will be the the endpoint which will grant you the access to the protected resource. That means the endpoint which is actually hosting the information. In case of Microsoft Azure AD, this endpoint is commonly known as graph.microsoft.com depending upon the directory information that you're trying to access. Now, since we all know that there is Azure AD graph as well. So again, it all depends upon the task that your application is trying to perform. You can either access Microsoft graph or you can also access Azure AD graph. So this was all about this particular video in which we have discussed about generic flow. We have talked about endpoints and we also discussed about authorization grant. In the next video, I'm going to talk about authorization code flow with a OAuth application that is added to Microsoft Azure AD. If you guys have any suggestions, feedback, please feel free to reach me at learnconceptswork at gmail.com. Also, if you have learned something new, please feel free to subscribe and comment in below. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks for your time. Have a great day. Bye-bye.